Look at this lovely fresh leaf. So we're about to get this processed. My tea farm is maybe it's been 150 years. Around the world, we are known as the home of English tea. They're pickers, the youngers, maybe 80 years old. We got five kinds of tea. They all make from my farm. Gorgeous English tea, look at this. Austin is a very large estate, in fact the largest estate in Cornwall. Tea is actually a very small part of what we do, although it's very important to be the home of the most British tea in history. When you hear about English tea, it's not actually grown in England. This is the first time tea has actually been grown in England. Gorgeous English tea, look at this. I was very privileged to be able to grow the first English tea here at Tregosnan in England in 1999. We didn't sell the first leaves until November 2005, but today around the world we are known as the home of English tea, picked here in Cornwall. I have uh, about 10 pieces of a tea garden because uh, Every garden is very small. Here maybe I have 2,000 tea trees at here. My tea farm is maybe it's been 150 years. This is June and uh, this summer we will process about Oriental Beauty tea. So they are hand pick the tea, only one tub and two leaves. We need the small tea leaves because we have green hops to feed the tea leaves. So we have can uh, more sweet and more uh, like a fruit flavor. A very important part of our work in tea at Tregosnan is selecting our own varieties that do extremely well here at Tregosnan. So we give them our own names. We have over 35 varieties of tea here at Tregosnan. Spring at Tregosnan and it's time to plant tea bushes. So these have been propagated, they're two years old and in another five years we'll be picking these and making delicious tea. This spring we'll be planting over 30,000 baby camellia bushes across the Tregosnan estate. Jacob, these are real tea bushes and yeah. you've got the two main sorts of tea here in yes. Pingling. What, which, which one is this? This one we call a Jingshen. In Tregosnan we plant about uh, 30,000 tea bushes every year, but we have to wait five or six years to produce tea. How many yeah. years do you wait in Pingling from planting to picking uh, tea? We have to wait in three years. Only three years? Only three years. Here, just one year's plantation. This is two years old, the tea trees. Here's a different cultivar. This kind we call a wild Taiwan tea, and this one we call a Qingxing Oolong. It's different. Thousands of baby tea bushes just been planted here in the middle of one of our new tea gardens here. This is only a few days old, and we're going to have to water these tea bushes because they're very young, the soil is very dry, and it's the middle of summer. The three bushes a minute is what we plant in this area and that's the easy bit. The, the difficult bit is getting them to year five when we actually produce tea. Okay. Jacob, when you and I filmed in Taiwan, we went to Pindling and we found tea seeds. 
and I said they don't really seed that well in Cornwall in England. Well, look, here they are, and these could be fabulous Subaki oil or Camellia oil. They're pickers, the youngers, maybe 80 years old. Only the old the person they can work hard. The young generation, they don't pick tea because they think this work is very, very hard. Really? After they pick the tea, we collect it. And then we have quickly to move to the next process because we have care about the tea, the fresh one. More fresh, we can do it in a good quality. So the white bag, they are collect the tea leaves inside. One day, maybe they just picking two kilos. And uh, we need uh, quickly to move next process. And because uh, the tea leaves, we need uh, very fresh. This machine is called fryer leaf because the tea is still uh, fresh. Uh, we in a higher temperature, in 350 temp Celsius, and uh, rolling about six minutes. After rolling, we just pull it, pull it off. Tea will come out. Then, we're we'll moving to here. This machine we call in water because we need to change the tea, the surface, change the shape, and damage the surface. That's why we make tea that release the liquid very quickly. After here, we just move to the dryer machine. The temperature was in 100 and continue using the two times. So we have two machines to dryer. To here, out again. So this is totally dryer leaf. Here is very dry. But actually, the moisture is still inside. We need control the humidity to 5%. So for last, Machine is still the same as dryer, but it's boxing machine. Look at this lovely fresh leaf. So we're about to get this processed. This machine is a Scottish designed and originally built in a foundry just south of Glasgow. And then in the Indian independence, it was the whole factory foundry was moved to Calcutta. And we bought this back from Calcutta last year and now it's here at Tregothan making tea. But the process is very simple. So this machine mimics hand rolling. So we pluck with a roll, oxidize and dry. And when you roll, this machine actually takes over and does that for you. So it's mimicking the, the orthodox hand rolling. This is how the best teas are made. So it's not cutting and brew, uh, it's not cutting or tearing the leaf. It's literally just bruising it as if you were rolling by hand. And that releases the um, juices within the leaf which oxidize with, with each other and that gives you that unique tea flavor. This is more of a Darjeeling style um, champagne of tea kind of process. In China and Japan and Taiwan they tend to go more for green tea. This village we call the Ping Li. The famous tea we call the Baozhong tea. And Baozhong tea is famous because they got a lot of flower flavor. Sometimes you smell it like a jasmine, sometimes like a lily, I think. And this one we call Oriental Beauty. The smell is very sweet and you're tasting like some fruits. And this one is very interesting. It's about storage tea. We storage the Baozhong tea, the fresh one, to 40 years. So we call it aged Baozhong tea. Uh, it smells like wood, but you're tasting that if you're drinking pura before, it's tasting the same, the like same taste. This one we call the black tea. It should be because the Taiwanese uh, process of black tea sometimes smell like honey, so we call him honey black tea. But actually, just black, just a black tea. This one we call the tea guanyin. This is a uh, north famous tea in Taiwan. In, uh, it's a roasting tea. We roasting it in hundred hours. So you can image that sometimes the smell is like uh, seaweed, but tasting sometimes like brown sugar. We got five kinds of tea. They all make from my farm. This is Baozhong tea, Oriental Beauty, and the aged Baozhong tea, black tea, and the Tieguanyin. 
the temperature is 100 Celsius degree. This one is for, cu for cupping. Let me know and figure out the tea quality. This is all the same tea, just change the process. We can get different type of tea. So I say it's different from tension, so you can get different color. So this is the light one, and this is very interesting. Before 40 years ago, it still be light and green. But now, we storage in 40 years, so we could get dark. One kilo in 20,000 dollars. Yeah, it's very expensive because you hard to store age. This is the Baozhong tea, light fermentation. I slurp it because I need the air mixed with uh, the liquid so you can get more flavor in your mouth. Now we're tasting Oriental Beauty. This one is more expensive because they totally only pick by hand and process by hand. It's traditional way. We cannot use in the machine to harvest it. The quality is not good. And the first tea that we produced was the classic. So it's a nice black tea. And the tea we have from here is from the Camellia sinensis. And this is a tea that we use as a base for a large proportion of our blends. Now this tea has been infused for three minutes and then I'm going to pour it into the tasting cup and this tea will produce a lovely amber colour. And the thing with the leaves, because the leaves are all dry, when they're infused with water, they expand. We were always brought up that you shouldn't slurp your tea, but when you're tasting tea, it's a good idea to slurp it because then you get the flavour going all the way around your mouth so that you get the full benefit of the flavour of the tea. So you've got that nice smooth woody warm flavour, slightly spicy with from that lovely amber colour and it's always good to try a black tea without milk in it first although it's traditional for us in this country to put milk in first or second. Um, that was first introduced because the teas that came over to England were very, very bitter and it was one way of sweetening them up. So it's a good way to try. Like anything, the second taste always tastes better than the first. We're quite famous here for our Earl Grey. Not only is it the owner's, Mr. Evelyn Boscowan's favourite tea, it's also they are descendants of Earl Grey himself. This is a tea that we infuse with bergamot oil to give it that lovely aromatic citrus flavour. And the oil that we use, we have shipped over from Calabria in Italy. Here again, we have that lovely amber colour, which goes with this black tea. But the difference, you've got the nice, lovely citrus smell. Now we are central Taipei city and here the name is uh, Step by Stop Tea House and we're drinking the Genesis tea. Yeah, yeah we're starting to uh, brew the Genesis tea. Mm. He said um, the tea because it's very fresh and very young picked. So with uh, just a small bud, it's very close to also some of the Chinese tea, but it also has this character of the Darjeeling. Mr. Shen said the tea with this character of Darjeeling makes very much sense because in the old days, uh, British, they also went to many different countries and planted tea. So actually the technique of making this kind of tea is 
owned by the Britain because they developed the making of this type of tea. It's also the way it's being picked and uh, which is very different to for example in Taiwan that the leaves uh, are much bigger due to the, the climate difference. And this type of tea is very similar to some part of China where they also picked very small leaves like uh, would be green tea, Chinese green tea would have been the, a good reference. Tea in Taipei is a bit like tea in China, but even more liberal. And they, they're quite adventurous. They really love um, Western styles of tea. They, they're big into coffee, but they're quite happy to experiment with the British style of tea. So they almost see it as an exotic foreign thing. Mm -hmm. What's interesting here is that the um, bag is, is shrunk wrap, so they vacuum packed. This is a thing that Taiwan does more than any other country. It's very good for the tea and it's very good for keeping it fresh. It's um, a very steamy tropical country in most places. Pindling is oh, a bit cooler because it's higher up, but the tea they make is very, very high quality. And we're back to see for the first time quality of the leaf and that is um, going to hydrate very quickly and very nicely, which we'll do. Maybe, yes, we've already done. So, um, in three or four minutes, it almost comes back to life. And you can see it's had some oxidation, it's changed colour, um, it's got a nice aroma. It's quite vegetal, if you like, but it, you can still see its mm. tea. This would be a considered a luxury tea in, in Taiwan. And it's very good. The tea farmer always is uh, in family business. So we now we got the third generation. Maybe we can continue to take care of our business. We've always been a nation of tea drinkers, and we all know about English tea, but no one's actually grown tea in England properly before. So giving a home to the world's number one drink seemed like a fun project.